This episode of Strange Love brought to you by Treasure Licious. Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Baby, wear my ring around your neck. Then they're gonna know, they're gonna know by hand. You're my woman, baby. I'm your man. Because you wear my ring around your neck. Baby, wear my ring around your neck. Then they're gonna know. They're gonna know by head. Your little giant woman, baby. I'm your man. Because you wear my ring. was Wear My Ring by John Barras. Welcome to another edition of Strange Love. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. We're joined, as always, by Dr. Normal. Hello, everybody. And this week's special guest is John Barras. Gee, I'm just delighted to be here. G. <laughs> Rutgers, good bass player. <clears throat> Who was the bass player on that track? <laughs> Rob Shoemaker. That's what we have the doctor for. <laughs> Who currently plays with uh, Norman Sylvester? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. He does. That's true. Um, this is a little bit different episode of Strange Love because we've never had a musical guest before, and even though we're not actually going to be playing any music in the studio, we're going to have several musical clips to kind of uh, give you a look at the retrospective, the musical uh, wanderings of John over the the. Decades. Oh my, yes, we have. The decades of music that John <laughs> has been creating. That's right. He's a young man, but he's traveled back and forth in time to bring you music to this make you true. all happy. That's right. I'm getting younger all the time. <laughs> <laughs> G. Willikers. You look great. Every time he says G. Willikers, I'm just going to wonder. Okay. Yeah, I really am. So That would uh, be a good title for our next album. There you go. G. Willikers. I'm thinking of it kind of as a ballad. Every time he says G. Willikers, I'm going <laughs> to wonder. 
something like that. See, I'm the type of guest it's really hard to get me started. You know, I just, we don't say boo. Gee willikers. Yeah, it's hard to get you to talk. I've noticed that about you. This is true. Yeah. He's got nothing at all to say. Nothing? Mm, no. Nothing at all? You don't want to tell us a story? You want to start us off with a story about your past? Okay. I do want to. Then tell us a story, John. I guess usually <laughs> Cammie's used to the guests coming with their own questions and asking their own questions. Really? Is that what they usually do? Well, then I, I got a couple of questions. I guess so. My guests do prepare I, for me. I have some stuff for you. I thought Cammie was going to lead with a question. I, I have some Yeah, what happened to all the easy prepared. questions? Like, what's your favorite color? That's amazing. John, <laughs> what's your favorite color of shoe? Mm. And, and, and brown shoes don't make it. Mm. Let's try a different question. That actually is a hard question. What's your favorite color? No, I didn't ask what your favorite color was. I asked what your favorite color shoe was. Well, brown. I, or I can't black? remember. You can look at this from you know from a walking down the street standpoint or from a theatrical standpoint. When I did theater, I knew the the hard and fast rule was not to wear white shoes. Really? You did some theater, or you did some? Yeah. Yeah. I've heard this about white shoes down through the decades. Mm-hmm. Well, I kind of like them now and then. I mean, white shoes, I don't know. I don't I'm a seer sucker suit. I'm not a white shoe G. Person. Willikers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have to wonder about that one. I really, really don't. So, um, Can we just turn the mic off for a minute? Cause, <laughs> well, let me just make a note. Go ahead. G. G. Willikers. G. Willikers. I'm just going to make G. Willikers he, note number one. He's, gonna make, he's not going to share My any real of his goal, dirty jokes with I you. I think it's appropriate for me to say I'm really happy to be here. All of you out there in Radio Land, you can't believe... It really is kind of like the friendly confines here. And, you know, up till recently, I didn't even know that, that friendly confines, I guess, were for just a minute. G. Willikers, number one. But anyway, where were we? What's the question? Turquoise, I think, would be the answer. There we go. Okay. Just a minute. Well, go ahead. I'll multitask. Okay, so let's start. You've been making music for a really long time. Oh, yes. And why don't you tell us what got you there? What is it that gave you the drive that I don't made know. you want to make music i don't know why i don't tell you that what was the question again <laughs> oh i got such a good sense of humor yeah i'll <clears> let you keep it. it if you answer the question right why did you want to make music <clears throat> or you can just make something up i don't care it doesn't have to be the truth you just have to tell me something or both yeah i can't remember actually no? You're in like L.A. or something. Let's see. Little Count Basie. Mm. I, I could see there. John C's. 1961, John C's and here's Count Basie Band, Los Angeles. Does that have anything to do with band. it? Terrific band. Actually, I, my uncle, actually, I think I heard before. Oh, yeah. you're, you're two rockabilly uncles. Right. But I only saw one of them oh. first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my uncle played. Uh, my uncle actually, his name's Johnny Rio, but in Portuguese, Rio means rivers. So my uncle actually had a stage name Johnny Rivers before the other Johnny Rivers. You wow. Know? Hmm? Yeah, and I lived back east when I was a kid, and I I was probably 1956 or 7. I came downstairs in my grandmother's house, and my uncle was, uh, was you know, pounding away on the guitar and singing, and it, it was, uh, I thought that was groovy, you know. Cool. I did see Count Basie when I was nine years old or something. And that's kind of like the first 20 years of my life, you know, except for being normal like Huckleberry Finn. So it's sort of a combination of Huckleberry Finn, my uncle, and Count Basie. <coughs> So how G. Willikers, plus everything else I can't talk about. How old were you when you picked up the guitar? I got a guitar for Christmas in 1963. So that's like, uh, you know, three months. And let me do this. I was good at math. That's actually only five weeks and three days before Beatlemania. Oh, there we yeah, go. Yeah, so in December 63, I got a guitar. And I also played clarinet in the St. Joseph's Grade School Band. But then after Beatlemania, you know, the guitar, G. Willikers, <coughs> better than the clarinet, you know, which reminds me of when John Lennon was on Tom Snyder. Let's just go through several questions. Okay, let's go through several questions. I'd, I'd like to, let's, we can also play the decades. Oh, yeah. Like we do 63, 73, 83, 93, yeah. 2003. Well, my, my first question. And my favorite, 2013. Oh, that's going to be good. Go ahead. Let me tell you, that's going to be good. When's the first time that you played? On stage. When's the first time you played with an ensemble or with a band or that you played for people? Well, as soon as I got the guitar, that's how I, I'm really a master of stage fright, I've mm -hmm. noticed. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I'm so very used to it. 
Aren't we all? Oh, I, I don't know about everybody else, but I mean, I had a guitar, and my entire family's kind of, you know, sort of musical, artistic type of thing. But as soon as I had it, I mean, like within three weeks, you know, I'm going to play the guitar for him. It's something like that, you know. Hey, John, get another guitar. Let's hear a song. So, mm-hmm. you know, my upper lip began to perspire a few times in January of 64, and then now it seems like just real normal to me. <laughs> And what was the question? Well, that's, I guess, no, that, yeah, the first yeah, time was, When the was the friends. first time you started playing for people? And then yeah, my I other question so. is, when's the first time that you recorded? What? When did you start recording? Um, Do you have my discography? Did Penelope McGill kind of get it to you? I'd like to give a big that shout Penelope. out to Penelope she's McGill. A, she's a you talented have her gal. The show sometime. Second page. What, was it the she's caravan? my manager, best ma- manager in the world. And I'd also like to give a shout out to the Chicago chapter of the Doc Normal Fan Club. Woohoo! That's right. It's Yay, Chicago chapter. chapter. We also were, it's almost like taking franchises. So if anybody Southeast is available and New England is still available. I can't read this. I can't see anything <laughs> without my glasses. And if I put my glasses on, somebody eventually is going to turn on this camera, which means you can barely see my head will look like a Was it Caribbean Caravan? Dots. Caribbean in Caravan is what we say. Or over in Scotland, of course, we say the Caribbean Caravan. <laughs> oh, yes. 71. I was burning with it. Burning with desire as I played with the Caribbean Caravan in uh, 1971. That's right, probably April, something like that. Groovy that was a band, jazz band. Really like wonderful group. Portland, kind of a jazz Portland band? Or what was that? I think it was all in Portland. Cool. Maybe Beaverton, we played at the Hi Hat and Tiger, which is still there. When's the coffee table book coming of Portland nightclubs? That'd be cool. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. That'd be a good one. I like when he asks me a lot of questions at once. When I Faster, ask you a lot cat. of questions Faster. at once. Yes. Hmm. Um, I think you've covered a lot of genres. You've done some blues, some jazz, some rockabilly, some classical guitar. What's your favorite thing to play? Mm. Your favorite genre, your oh, favorite kind of music? I would have to take the fifth on that. I, I need the more wild questions. But what do you lean towards? I'm, I can't ask you wild questions. All the wild questions have been forbidden. Well, <laughs> we can take that in after hours. Yeah. Dag, no. dag nam it. <laughs> G. Willikers. <laughs> Let's see. I invented G. Willikers. I also invented Alter Boyitis and Doggy Dinner Bowl Eyes. Those are my three inventions. Did you copyright them? Well, I am now. Well, are they, those people there, how many people do we have? And Doggy if anyone what? wants to call in, Let's see. they can call in. That's what I want. I want someone to say, I want someone with a funny voice from, you know, I don't know, a state like maybe where they have an accent to say something like, oh. We get accents God, on our John, show. John, what the heck is your favorite color? That's what I, I could talk like. to you like this. Okay, go ahead. I could ask you questions like this instead. I could All just right. say, hey, John, uh, what's that that you're drinking there? I can't read that either <laughs> because I don't want to put my glasses on. Like Carly Simon, I'm so vain. Uh, that's my theme song. Oh, well. Yeah. I'm going to put my glasses we on. We could compete. We could compete to see who's more vain in front of the camera. I don't wear my glasses I'm, either. Turn on the uh, camera, would you? What's that? Who is that over there? Don Pardo? Can the you turn li- on the camera, your daddy-o? Oh, the okay. light. I have an important visual. I think the light. No, you, they can see it. They can see it. Oh, oh, it's still on. Yeah, yeah. Oh. oh, the camera's been on this whole time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well. We're, we're, we're good <laughs> to go. Who are the listeners we have? Let's see. We've got. Let You've me. had a lot of guests, but I'm probably the first and last guest to do <laughs> this. Okay. Oh, yes. oh, yay. That's a real talent. That's why I was voted most likely to succeed. This is skill. This is the first time that I ever met John in person. Uh, this is what I call him. He now. balanced beer on his head. Faster, pussycat. Faster. Let's see. Who do we have in the Don't chat room? stop talking. We've yes, got Bram and Juxtaposer and Media Chick. Bram, that's that cat and dragon. And my right? cousin Mai <laughs> and Steve's wrong and a bot and two unidentified you streamers. This is bigger than most of the nightclubs they play. <laughs> tell you about the teeters twins these two girls who came to oops no that's good <laughs> yeah i know they were they were identical twins and we played a place on sandy boulevard and back then we had speaker columns by the way that reminds me doctor what we need to do our top priority is to get a bass player and a pa system yes, yes. Uh, anybody but listening anyway, a good bass player we had a the old-fashioned pa systems with like the tuck and roll upholstery and you know the two columns and these girls were identical twins so one was standing in front of each column and that's really the harder parts of show business when at times like that you say something like, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the club tonight. And, uh, you know, G. Willikers. So, G. Willikers. where are we? Is this? I, I thought the do story. Do I set my 
I thought Karen, the story Karen, was going to uh, to. Uh, oh, oh by the way, is, is there a drummer in the house? I think you have a good story about <laughs> that too. You know, do you have a good story about a drummer being in the house? Because I have a drummer in my house, but I don't think everyone does. Yeah, I think it was uh, the old Estrelitas, which is yeah. I get not some there. stories, but <clears throat> every time you say you have a good story, then that's kind of just the real killer. You just yeah, there you go. I did have a good story. We played a hundred and six weekends in a row. At this nightclub called Estrelitas. Now it's called Dots and 26 and Clinton. And um, actually it went pretty seamlessly. What's the math on that? 104, 208 shows for me. Plus the five hours a night, like the 9 to 2 p.m. But one night the drummer didn't show up, so I just walked around the club, you know. And I tried to find the most athletic person. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I had like two number two pencils, you know. Yeah. So, of course, and I gave the guy the pencils and saw if he could, is the camera on? So if you <laughs> did, of course, this is time delay, you. right? They can see you. And anyway, and then thank God the guy came in at the nick of time, the real drummer. And that's the way that went. It was pretty good over there, though. So the guy with I the think. pencils didn't get to play? No, but we had a lot of people set, set in back then. Virtually almost anyone. I don't know why we did, because then later we'd never let anyone set in. We had some really <laughs> whack people set in, though. Maybe you had too many wackos sit in, and then you... We did. Oh, we yeah. had some real wackos sit in. Like, people would sit in, and you'd close your eyes, play the guitar, and then you'd open your eyes, and, like, the vocalist would be prone on the ground because he'd passed out or something. <laughs> or people, like, fell off bar stools. That was fun. So it was it kind, really of a, was. kind of a... It was a, a wild place. It was, And, you know, I don't like these real stuffy clubs where, like, you know, everybody, you know, the singer-songwriter thing, well, I might as well start offending someone. You know, Yay. yeah, yeah, these singer songwriter things were gee, gee, man. You know, if you'd quit playing those, you know, uh, uh, video games and we could play our music, because ours was kind of like a mall of entertainment, you know, like people that's anytime any of these ancient archival nuggets, as Penelope says, we have from these old shows. You always oh, hear I've, the, I've got a good archival nugget. You always nugget. hear the sound of G. Wilkers. You always <laughs> hear the sound of pool balls falling. That's when I really feel at home, you know. <laughs> the pool balls fall and then people breaking the rack and then the TV on, you know, people watching wrestling or something. And then it feels normal with a big crowd. You say something, hey, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to play a few tunes for you. So what was the question? I don't remember, but Neither do I. but we have a great archival nugget. Oh, you do? We do. I think it would be a great time for us to play one of my favorite recordings of okay. yours. Thank you, by the Although, way. Although, I, appreciate I say that about a lot of it because, you know, you, you get to be on the show because I like you. All right. <laughs> This is Ain't Superstitious. Ain't superstitious, but a black cat just crossed my trail. I said I ain't superstitious, but a black cat just crossed my trail. Don't sweep me with no broom, cause I probably get put in jail. Dogs are barking all over my neighborhood. Yeah, dogs are barking all over my Well, that's a sure sign of death You know that ain't no good I get money for sure I said when my right hand is itching I get money for sure But when my left hand starts jumping Somebody sure has got to go
Ain't Superstitious, which was recorded in 1976, which was a year before I was born. Really? Really. Well, there goes my first question. <laughs> um, Cammy likes me. As long as people keep laughing. Oh, she's blushing. I don't know. I'm probably the, Am first, I blushing the first person or been... to ask a question, but maybe the... Are you blushing or what? What are you looking at? Oh, I think it's just warm for? down here. I just like my beer bottle. It's not beer, though. It's it's hard cider. Mmm. Yeah. Well, there goes my second question. There you go. See, I just answer everything for you. Um, that recording was... There goes my third question. Good night, everybody. There you it's go. been wonderful to be here. All right. Oh, yes, sit down. Uh, that was early on in your recording. In, I guess in you'd your recording. So. Yeah, I was just a youngster, 24. Who who was that recording with? Now, was that well, one? That was just me. That was just you? Yeah, it was. And was that one of the first? This, was that, I think there's a group of songs. We, we can't play them off for you. We don't have enough time mm. um, that we chose from. And did you make them all at the same time? Did, was it, you know, did you sit down and say, hey, I want to record a bunch of stuff? You I really did don't remember too no? much. I vaguely remember it. It was 1976, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I think. I really don't remember. It's a long time ago. That was a record, though. That was like a 45. Yeah, yeah. it was, but that was no big deal. Necessarily. Back in I think it was an acetate, actually. Yeah. All you young people out there know what an acetate is. It kind of goes from seventy eights to LPs to acetates to someone explain an acetate. to eight tracks to uh, well, they used to make like brittle records. Yeah, they'd actually cut it. But anyway, I, I can kind of remember mm-hmm. making it, sort of. Yeah, kind of, sort of remember making it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you have an excellent memory, Mister Braz. You're a font of Cammy's knowledge. out of her mind. <laughs> nah, I don't have an excellent memory. Cammy's just a little bit snarky, that's all. Well, um, so who, but who, we knew that going in, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, who, did, who were you How playing with around How come I can't make Dr. That? Normal laugh? Yeah, he yeah, he only thinks that he's funny. He's too busy. No. <laughs> he's too busy to Asked laugh. and answered, as we say. <laughs> so who were you playing with, aside from just playing with yourself at that time? <laughs> nice question. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And that's the way we do it here on Strange Love. Live. You might not be able to say anything, but I can. Okay. It's your show. You mean that in 1976, there were the bandmates and whatnot? In 76, and, and you know, around those times, you mm-hmm. you played with some impressive Portland people. Well, not that And long I'd like ago. you to name drop now. Yeah, I'd give you chronology. It's even cooler than the biography. They just have like a little list. Everybody's down with lists now. Mm-hmm. Um, I dropped out of college in 1971 i answered an ad in the portland bridge which was a predecessor of the willamette week in april i joined that band the caribbean caravan we played a bunch of times maybe 20 or 30 uh there's a place now it's a real hot club up on sandy boulevard called clyde's it used to be called uh uh alfie's and that's where we first played oh and we also played at porky's on martin luther king and broadway which is now a toyota dealer <laughs> And then uh, that lasted quite a while, but I kind of wanted to have my own band. And like in 1976, I used to go to this place called the Ninth Street Exit, name dropping. All the old timers know that place. Terrific place. Now it's, I think, called, I can't remember, Ash Street, something or other. It's still there. And I I think when I did I Ain't Superstitious, I was probably, I, I was, I just kind of, you know, had the guitar and a microphone, I guess. And then there were a bunch of guys, a guy who's one of my MySpace friends, Pat Kelly. Shout out to the Pat Kelly Band, I think it's called. He played with me in 1976 in a blind drummer with an eye patch. Maybe kind of before the pirate thing, you know, man. <laughs> Is he it wrong of patch. me to ask if he put his eye out with a drumstick? No, I think he was blind, and I, did, I think he just put the, put the eye patch on because he thought it would help him you know, look groovy. And then okay. a bass player, very good. And then, uh, I can't even remember the question. I, I, yeah, I played with a bunch of people later that were pretty well known. It's all on my website. We want you to go to johnbraz.com. <clears throat> Make sure you send something to Penelope McGillicuddy, my friend. Penelope is a good gal. She's outstanding. The best there is. Yeah. But So, you know. I'm going to just ask. I'm going to say, yes. you played with Billy Rancher. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, really great guy. All the Rancher brothers. Uh, His yeah. brother Lenny mm-hmm. also and another, the members of that band. I played with this guy named Andy Stricker. Mm-hmm. And his son was Dave Stricker, who was one of the Malchicks. And when we played at this place in 26 in Clinton, all of the Malchicks came in. It was actually before they formed their band, I think, or something. Really fun guys, really nice guys. <clears throat> That's been my experience of them. And, and they're really just good people and groovy, you know. They really like to jam. They played a lot. We also had this guy, Frank Bonham, who would come by all the time. He was real cool. 
He's also on our website. Host Gone but not forgotten. Host of uh, Portland Wrestling. That's right. Mm-hmm. Any of you wrestling the voice fans of out wrestling. there? You know, I I don't. My cell phone is ten years old, but all you computer nuts, you know, you start getting your thumbs going. Check out Frank. Really a great guy. Sometimes Frank would actually be on TV and on stage at the same time because we played <laughs> Saturday nights and they had like Portland Wrestling on Saturday nights. And uh, oh, kind of like Strange Love, you know, it's kind of Strange Love. They'd have a tape delay sort of thing. So Frank would tape his show like at 8.30. He came, I probably, he was a friend of Andy Stricker, the father of the bass player with Malchicks. And then it became a pal of mine. But uh, Frank probably came down every weekend for maybe six months in a row. And that was really great. Then you had the pool balls going. You had the foo stable going. You had wrestling on TV. And you had Frank on stage. And, you know, these real drunks who would fall off the bar stools would say shit like that. You know, like, hey, man, he's a guy on TV. <laughs> Frank had a great repertoire. He had, like, four songs. He had to do over and over again. And he also had, like, real cool leisure suits. If you go to johnbrows.com, you can see some photos of the leisure suits. And he had an hmm. afro. like all Great the, pictures up there. Or uh, the MySpace page, which did. I think is yeah, I guess uh, so. MySpace slash... Something. John like Bras. Anytime it's that's a right. slash or more than one button, I don't know what it is. So there's another photo up there that's going to cause me to ask a question. And okay. of all the old photos I've seen of you, I think my favorite is a picture of you and uh, Norman Sylvester and Rob Shoemaker and maybe Norman's brother, I think you said. I could be wrong. Norman's brother-in-law. Yeah, we were Norman's playing at Portland in State. That was a Valentine's Day dance. I can remember that one. That was really a cool one. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we played down at those college gigs were the grooviest, man. They really were. Played at Reed, played at PSU, stuff like that. <clears throat> so, yeah. so, did you have specific questions? No. We have Just another. Uh, we have uh, another. Well, you, know, you know what Mickey Rourke says? Yeah, kind of. I'm, kind not, of the, looking, I'm not the answer, man. I'm the question. Hmm. <laughs> kind of looking. We're going to go just one more, you know, step into the past, not as far oh. back as we went last time. And then okay. I think. You know, after well, that, we'll start looking at what you guys are doing now. So this is this is rocking my life away, which I think was from kind of that. Uh, uh, Billy Ranch that, that playing on this. Yeah, record. Billy is, is yeah. Billy on this on this tune. I think so. Yes, maybe, but maybe yeah. Bob Martin, one of those two guys. He played with Pete Carnes band. So let's take a listen to uh, "Rocking My Life Away" from uh, nineteen eighty. <laughs> She do is get a chili pepper hot She knows how to roll, I know how to rock And I'm rocking, rocking my life away Moving and grooving, getting it both night and day Well, I'm rocking, rocking my life away Rocking, rocking my life away Getting it both night and day Getting it both night and day. It's 
Johnny played a guitar one more time. If you were watching while that song played, John and I had a little bit of an argument, and we tried to Lovely. use the you know microphones to solve our problems. And violence with microphones is never the solution, people. That but, reminds me when Captain Wizzigal told me, John, I think you dropped it once too many times. I brought in my <laughs> microphone and said, it's not working. <laughs> yeah, did you drop it? I said, yeah, I dropped it. <laughs> Accidentally, I'm not all down with that smashing the guitars action. <clears throat> no, really. I don't. I not really, not too like much. To so, as, as Jerry Seinfeld would say, not that there's anything wrong with that. And so, somebody wants to smash your guitars. I think, so what kind of guitar do you play? I, wait, I, wait, wait, before we get there, I think you wanted to say something to Media Chick, because Media Chick was just saying that last time she went with her dad, it was to go see Norman Sylvester play. Thank you, Media Chick. That's all you had to say? Well, <laughs> you got to realize I'm like the most, you know, everyone used that word retarded in a politically incorrect way, but I'm technologically retarded. I was just telling Cammy everything interesting as soon as Mike turns the microphones off here, that, you know, my cell phone's 10 years old. I can barely handle a dial phone, so I don't know how all this modern stuff works, but, you know, if you can call on the phone media chick, then I'll say something like, well, I'm glad your folks enjoyed Norman. Norman's still out there all the time, by the way. Mm-hmm. Out there constantly. Puts on a great show. Wonderful guy. That's what I really remember from Esther Lee. It really it was like a big party all the time. It was kind of like this, but people were drunker. It was louder, and it lasted for five hours, and you got free food. Now, I'm sure if we did this yeah. in the evening, we could get them nice and drunk and, and maybe get them to be Well, loud. you know, the more you drink, the better we sound. So Woohoo! Speak. It's true. So as, kind of. as Dr. Norm was asking, tell us about Dr. your guitar. Well, you know, I, I, I'm not just making this up, too. I'm also, like, I've really been waiting for this question for a long time. Because most of these people in this line of work, you know, they know about every Ernie Ballpoint 035 string and all the kinds of pickups. I'm not making this up. I changed the strings on my guitar in 1979. That's the last time I changed them. Same strings. Wow. Yeah. And so next year will be 2009. So I figure every three years, then I'll wait 10 years and change them. But mm. I got a cool guitar. I bought it. And I don't really know. I don't know about this stuff. I'm... That's what Fon Portago used to say about his Ferraris. You know, he'd just like put a scratch on one so he knew what it was. But like if it stopped running, he'd just say, taxi, you know, because I don't know anything about guitars. But I know it's an old one. It's a Gibson. I bought that from Captain Wiz Eagle, too, in 1976. I carried it. I carried it across the country in a bus. That was kind of fun. Mm-hmm. In the Greyhound. Who else do we have out there? I can't even see the screen. What yeah. I want is one of those teleprompters, you know, like, yeah. isn't that what they used to have in the old really days? Big yeah, teleprompter. Great big letters that said something like, <laughs> Media Chick is online well, now. We have a live audience, though. We have all the same people, except Bram has left and Betsy has joined us. Hello, oh, Betsy. <laughs> Bram has left. Sorry, Bram. The door swings both ways. Yeah, I think okay. his battery was dying. Oh, well. Um, so, 1980. Right. Just a few years after 1976. Oh, yeah. I've been getting to remember that now. But the recording was completely different. Different quality. Were you playing with different people? I mean, was that track was with people well, as yeah, opposed we, to by we yourself? we really got rolling. We, we, the band really started kind of going in 76 a lot. And, and so I'll, I'll tell you a little later about, you know, the new band. We had a real renaissance going on here with Dr. Normal. But now we spend 99% of our time recording and 1% one, 1 playing. Mm -hmm. In the old time, we used to spend like 1% recording and 99% of the time playing. Mm -hmm. So all of those things, like in between the 76 and the 80, there were probably literally, you know, two or 300 gigs. But the band, was, it kind of kept going. It really started rolling. As for leaders with the best, 79, 80, and 81, every weekend without a, without a miss. But we played different places. We played the White Eagle a bunch. We played at Bogart's Joint. We played at Euphoria and places like that. And so. that band was, it was a bigger band. We actually had a horn section on there. There's horns. Mm -hmm. um, a guy named Derek Abram was really well known around Portland. He had a, what they called the Just 17 Big Band. He's played with a million people. He played in the Pipsqueaks with Lenny Rancher. And he's playing saxophone and a, another guy was playing saxophone. So what was the question? I don't know what the question was, but I have How a How are your question. ears feeling? That's what I want to know. My ears warm are and sweaty hot. ears. I have hot ears. Microphones make your ears hot. Um, microphones and don't you, make your ears hot. Headphones make your ears hot. You're tripping, dog. Yeah, that's me. So now, 1980s. Is this around the time that you started? Uh, I'm trying to. I'm trying to gracefully work in the videos that you did, the music videos, that's and right. how there may be some kind that's of a connection right. between those music videos and my lovely family. 
That's right. Dr. Normal did the videos before he was called Dr. Normal. He had another pseudonym. I can't remember now. But he was around that time because I actually met met the doctor at a PSU in 1983 or something. That's right. And uh, actually, I knew a guy named Bob Shatola who never did play the drums with me, but I suppose he was a pretty good drummer. I think my memory yes, on this was. is pretty clear. And I said, Bob, I, I used to go through a lot of side men. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, although actually, you know, this uh, Rob Shoemaker plays me like 300 gigs in a row, but drummers were kind of spacey, and we had some gig, or I was playing with Norman, actually. Norman and I sort of, ref- we kind of formed a band in the 80s or something like that. I, I really don't remember the details, but we needed a drummer because that other guy who you liked in the favorite photograph couldn't make it that week or something, and I think I asked Bob Chatola if he wanted to play the drums, and he said, no, I know this guy named... Uh, you Doc know, Normal. Franklin Sheckle Group or whatever. His <laughs> Mike. Is. His name is Mike. Okay. We'll go with that. Okay. Mike McGillicuddy. And anyway, and so then I think he just kind of showed up. But I was a student at PSU because I wanted to get a couple of music degrees. And he was also a student down there. Though I don't know if you're a music student. Yeah, I was. taking some music classes. Yeah, I was. And so then we played a bunch of stuff. But I think a real multi-talented guy that's Dr. Normal, you know what I'm talking about? So he also <laughs> would do like videos and whatnot. And, and we did the, what was the question when we did some videos in the 80s? Mm-hmm. We did a couple of comedy videos, and then we did some music videos, which are on, YouTube. how much time do we have? Is it like we 30 got plenty minutes? Of time. They're on YouTube, minutes. but but you know, they're also, um, well that you, you Penelope know, has them up on your website. Penelope has some of them on my website. And you know, you always jinx it when you say it's a good story, but you know, I got to tell you, this really is a good story. It's kind of like, I don't believe in synchronicity that much. But however this worked, I was living in Lake Oswego for a while. And when I was up there, I kept driving by Dr. Normal's old house. And uh, the synchronicity part, I flew down to Arizona last November. And right before I flew down, oh, I wait, said, wait, you know, let me Let me interject. Let interject. me interject because you skipped a whole thing I know about. None of, no one's going to understand. You mm-hmm. and Dr. Normal played together. He right. did some videos for you. And then you guys lost contact. Well, that's true, too. For about 15 years. I think that's true, too. Okay, and so we're taking up 15 years later, and now he's telling the story. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we played some... The videos were in 89, and now it's 2008. So that's almost 20 years. And then November of 2007, I was thinking, gee, there's Dr. Normal's old house. He used to also throw terrific parties. Really, the coolest of parties, you know. So I drive by the house, and all the engrams and my like memory banks were saying, "Yeah, you know, that's where the cool party was." And I thought I should see him. And also, I'm kind of a poor archivist. I actually have videotapes of these videos, but I didn't know where they were. They were in like a beer box underneath my baseball cards or something in the basement. Which, of course, you shouldn't keep them in the basement because it's moist down there. Though I found them and they work okay. <laughs> so anyway, I really did honestly say like. I, I, I'm a, here's some notes right here. Here's an audio. You can hear those. I always have some notes with me. And so they I, sound very I, I nerdy. actually wrote down, I wrote like on Saturday, November 11th, I'm going to go over to Dr. Normal's old house because I not only don't like the phone, I don't even like calling people on the phone. And I was going to knock on the door and say, hey, is Dr. Normal still here? And I was going to do that on Saturday the 11th because I'm kind of a Monday through Friday type guy. And like Friday the 10th, I got an email from my brother who found the videos on YouTube where they had like 2,000 visits or something. And so I thought that was kind of cool. And so it was easy to find Dr. Normal that way because, of course, you know, he's the ultimate tech boffin. So the long-winded story would be that uh, I was going to see him on Saturday. And the very next day, I got this uh, email. And, of course, then they were on YouTube. And so then I think... An email from your music. brother? Yeah, my older brother, yeah. who's also a real kind of high-tech nut, you know. And so he emailed him to me and and stuff like that. And then um, and then a couple of weeks later, I thought, well, this kind of meant to be. And now Dr. Norrell and I would kind of have a, a little band, and we kind of like have band practice, you know, almost every weekend, you know. What we just do, it's 99% recording and 1% playing, I think. Penelope has lined up some private party or something, but this is dependent. Very, I mean, very exclusive from what yeah, I've heard, yeah. Exclusive private party. <laughs> You get like a gift bag with, uh, I don't know, Chanel Number no. Five body wash in it or something. I don't know. They like putting those things. And plane tickets to Aruba, yeah, something like that. Yeah, one way tickets. That's what you do. You know, <laughs> goodbye. You know, that's, that's the answer to the fuel crisis. You know, all tickets are one way now. You know, man, it'll like you know deplete the economy and get you out of the buying pool or into the swimming pool. So anyway, 
assuming we have a bass player and a PA. If we have a PA and a bass player, we'll do it. See, doesn't it sound like the way show business really probably works? Does every kind man of. have to do these things? Kind of just all kind of Hi-yo. falls into place. <laughs> okay, what's the next question? What's the next question? You know, we were talking. Wow, we went from 1980 to yeah, right now so quickly. Remember. Maybe now's a good time for another song. Yeah, we could. Uh, we actually have something queued up from the new album. Did you guys uh, get a chance to talk about the new album? Well, why don't we? Why, you want to tell them about the new album a little bit before he starts the song? Um, it's, you already you already yeah, set it up. Yeah, if you go up, to that so. website, we have a discography, and actually. Penelope I think the Penelope needs to update the lazy the, bastard she yeah. is. She hasn't got this in. You know, that's, that's the kind of manager. If you have a new record, you know, next year we'll upgrade. Penelope Under needs construction to update is it. kind of what we got here. She's anyway, got, we got shit this up new from record. the it 70s came out in and April. 80s. It's called uh, Doc Normal Now. And it is on the Doc I, Normal I don't, site. Though. I don't know. What are we going to hear, as they always say on the radio? Because We're going to hear my favorite song from the album, which is That's Life. Hmm. All right. Yes, this is a song I wrote in 1968. I think you'll enjoy it. Insider big joke, you see? life uh, that's what people say you can be flying high in April shot down in May I ain't gonna let it get me down as long as this big old world keeps us spinning round don't you know That's life Hey baby, yeah That's what people say Made me flying high in April Shot down in May I ain't gonna let it uh, get me down As long as this Big old world keeps us spinning round I've been a puppet, a pirate, a pauper, a poet, a pawn and a king. I've been up and down and over and around. I learned one thing each time I find myself falling flat on my face. I just pick myself up and get. Back in the race that life Hey baby Funny how it may seem I've seen people get their kicks Stomping on a dream I ain't gonna let it get me down As long as it Big old world keeps us spinning round Hey, don't you know that flight, baby? As long as this big old world keeps us spinning round Yeah, baby I ain't gonna let it get me down Nice solo on this. That's 
like, and it's off the uh, the newest album it's called Doc Normal Now, with Doctor Normal and John Barras. As long as this big old world. All kidding aside, Penelope did do all the graphics on that too, and we really like Penelope. She's the world's <laughs> coolest manager. I got to tell you one thing though, Cammy, with that black getup, when you kind of get real stern with me and said something like, "Whatever image you want," you really look like a nun. I'm not kidding. <laughs> That's what I was referring to about Ultra Boyitis. You know, yeah. Between all those formative years, I was surrounded by nuns, just like in the Blues Brothers movie. So I think I'm gonna start wearing a habit and carrying a ruler around with me, or just. Wear a ruler and start carrying a habit around with you. I have plenty of habits that I carry Don't around with me. I really do. So, uh, <clears throat> so that's the new album. I just had that's to do part it. of it, and there's another one in the works, by the way, which we're hoping to release. Doctor, when do you think we're going to release that on the record? Uh, real soon now. Um, I think maybe in 2008. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It's definitely yeah, yeah. coming out. Uh, I, I, I'm just Penelope not sure. is doing the graphics on that one as well. I'm just not sure if it's a midsummer release or kind of an end of summer release. I'm just not I sure. I don't know. You know, you I, I think it would be really nice if that album was ready for that exclusive party that John was talking about. Yes, that's right. Me with too. the uh, gift bags with a Chanel number no. five body wash. Yeah, and the tickets, the one way tickets to the. That's right. Wherever I Aruba maybe is where yeah, I said. Yeah, that's where you yeah. get. You got a one way <laughs> ticket to Palooka Villa. Everybody out. Yes, yes. So, the new album. I kind of thought I'd like to do that party and then sleep in the House of Strange Love in a, in a sleeping bag. Yeah. All right. You heard yeah. it here. Maybe you can invite him to Camp Naughty. Um, ha, ha, ha. Let me, wait, let me check. Hold on. What oh, are, gee. What are the rules of Camp Naughty? Let me think. Is he a girl? No, but there'll be girls there. No, he's not a girl. Is he a blogger? Uh, he could be. No, he's not a blogger. All right. I, yeah. Although I don't think he would be offended by the uh, my <clears> hijinks I, I, of... My hobbies are like, I like to watch butterflies and and I do bird watching. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Camp Naughty would be too much for you. But you couldn't come anyway because you're not a girl and you're not a blogger. And registration is already closed for this season. Moving right along. <laughs> Actually, I have something to share. Share, I please. Have to share. Yeah, finally, I have something to share. Um... A guy goes into a bar and he says, I'd like a shot of whiskey, a shot of rye, and a shot of blended. I'm just kidding. I do have something to share. This is, you know what we call the esoteric esoteric archival nuggets? Yes, yes. This would be the second, the synchronicity. I I was driving by this house in Lake Oswego, and then my brother found the YouTube thing like within 24 hours and mailed it to me. Dr. Normal and I, I think while you were, where was he, upstairs or something? Yeah, he had something to break. Everything interesting. He missed it. He took a break. And so now we kind of, we get this kind of band with band practice once a week. We make these recordings and stuff. And what, so that's been, what, November, June, seven months or something? No, it started about uh, after the first of the year. I think, I think. it was in January. January, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah they so, used the House of Strange Love uh, mm, recording studios. The House of Strange Love recording studios. So anyway, we've been actually trying to find this. And so I knew this was Sunday the 15th. I found this on Saturday the 14th. I was rummaging around the beer boxes. I think beer box storage is the wave of the future. And a plain brown wrapper for the doctor. Yes. Ooh, Dr. Normal, what is it? What can it be? Kind well, of let's take my a mind. look here. This is a video, VHS videotape. Uh, th- this is something that, how we put stuff. Yes, exactly. We've been looking for this. That's right. So this this video is a, you can, here, you can show. No, the, no, you go ahead. Show the, show the kids the video. Um, um, yeah. This video was, I believe, a follow-up to the YouTube videos uh, Guitarista, uh, raw uh, footage. Yeah, a little piece called Guitarista. Look, it's a videotape. Well, we've been looking for this for a while. Do we have a VCR? There's some like. Ni- yeah, I think there's actually yeah. four hours. Ooh, of, look, there's paper in and here. And there's a lot of classical guitar music, I think. So. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really classical is, guitar. It's, it's kind of blues. Groovy. It's uh, Mount Tabor. I don't Something. know. It's all sorts of stuff. But we have so been it. looking for it. This is excellent. It. So yeah. we're going we're gonna to need to roll that off and start working with it. Penelope will soon get that on our website. It's called, did you just give him the finger? Is that what you did? I love to flip off oh. my people. That's all right. Yeah, when I was a barista, I actually got tipped way more by the people I was rude to. Yeah. Than it's the kind of like the nice convention to. center. Have you ever noticed it looks just like that? It does, it doesn't really it? It does, doesn't it? Well, that's excellent. Which from yes. Guitarista. There this is you go. exciting. I can't excellent. wait. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I, I only watched like five minutes that of over it. The him. first ten minutes were pretty pretty cool. Yeah, I remember it was. There's probably a lot of a lot of junk in there. Cool. So, 
So guitarista running around with a full format VHS camera all over something uh, like that, all over the city of Portland, all over Southeast Portland. That was fun, exciting. Yeah. I think uh, all we had was just a sheet of notes and a number two pencil. Yeah, I, I think I think if like ten years later I made a small film, which reminds me, you know, idea. after all these years, I'm a baby boomer. You're a little younger than me, just a babe in the woods. But after all these years, don't you think you know they should finally make the number two pencil the number one? Shouldn't they make it a number three or a number four? I mean, it's been at the top of the charts for like half a century. Exactly. Yeah, so they should make it the number one pencil. But then it would have nothing to strive for. Now, have I managed? Have I mentioned that the live band doesn't work on Sundays, so there was no uh, drum uh, drum hit there, you know, no fill. No oh, sorry about that. You yeah. Know. Well. But um. So we were going to talk about this album and. Mm, a big curiosity for me is okay. that this has been a very different recording process, maybe. Oh yeah. Than than what you've gone yeah, through. Yeah, I, th- I think what you what you want to know. Yeah, everything we ever did was live recording. Mm-hmm. Exceedingly old school, you know, no overdubs, no nothing. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I mean, since inquiring minds want to know, I mean, there's really only two people on the record. That would be Doctor Normal and me. So some of it's like a five piece band that's us doing five instruments, and some's like a six piece band. So. It's really fun. We're having a ball. Dr. Norm was like the ultimate of tech boffin ultimisto, you see. Every conceivable little, you know, tweaking activity so we can, like, superimpose a bird whistle on a field of cellos. <coughs> Something like that. Yeah, I yeah. love the bird whistle. But we like to keep I it do alive, too. too. Twittering birds is really sort of the ultimate goal. So, oh, so you do Twitter. like Twitter. Right? I thought you didn't know what Twitter was. I thought no, we were I, calling I read Twitter it, I Twizzlers. Read it, I read it, read it in the Oregonian. Well, it is like Twizzler, but I think that's like a candy that never took off. Twizzlers. Twizzlers took off. Oh, they did take off. Well, see, I don't yeah. know nothing about candy either. They're very popular. My friend and I have grand schemes of building a bra out mm. of them. I see. Well. Yeah. <laughs> what's so funny? I don't you know. know. So you read the Twitter, the Twitter article in the newspaper? That's right. Yeah, I read it. Yeah. It was all right. <laughs> There were some of the Sounds people, like some of the people that were uh, in the in the chat room right now were on the Twitter article. That's really groovy. Yeah, it was very very cool. It's kind of like the five degrees of Doctor Normal, seven degrees of separation. There you go. Yeah. Let's go ahead and jump in any time, Doctor Normal. Say well, something. Uh, what do you have to say about the new album, Doctor Normal? Well, if that the, is your real name. I think the new album is 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 really good. I think what we're working on now, the second album is going to be. Very, very exciting. I think we're... I know we're having a ball. Breaking some new, you know, adding some new things. And um, and I think that, um, you know, I mean, we keep it live. We keep it pretty live. So the, the sound is pretty live. I, I've noticed actually a bunch of people who've heard the album said, now is this, it sounds like you just, you guys are all jamming in there. And even though, you know, we've got some overdubs and stuff, we, we're definitely keeping it fresh and keeping it live. That's what we want. Yeah. Not I think the new record is going to be fun. Of course, I suppose all musicians say that. You don't hear too many guys say, yeah, our new record really sucks, you know. It's crap You're really going to hate the new one, and then the one after that is really going to be weak ass. <laughs> yeah. But I We're think really it's kind of groovy. Slump. Yeah, it's a little jazzier than what you used to do. Yeah, yeah, it, it really is. It really is, because, you know. Well, this album that's out now is a lot bluesier. Yeah, bluesier, jazzier, not so And the next and one, the next one's much jazzier, I think. There's a little it's kind, kind of, of a Latin boss feel Latin to it. Latin feel to it, which I'm excited about. Yeah. I, I hope think so. I think it's nice. Really nice, nice, nice tunes. <laughs> well, speaking of the new album, maybe we should uh, play another another uh, clip. Well, if we play another clip, then it's going to be the bye bye clip. Well, that's right. Well, we're sitting at about fifty four minutes right oh, now. I think we're at an hour. Well, okay. do you have any other questions for the darling Mister Barras? Uh, nothing I haven't asked uh, over the years, actually. Yeah, I can get a straight answer out of him. So you know, I'm done. I'm finished with him. Yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm used to that, so that, that's all right. You know? I'm, I'm ready for my close-up. Can you zoom in on me or something? Oh, really? Do we want the close-up? Sure, we could do that. Ooh, fancy camera work. I think. Hey, you can try. We'll see how good our cameras are. Because uh, I, I don't have enough to do. My, <laughs> ear, my ears are also warm. Yeah. Thanks for having me, everyone. I would like to relate to Cammy like Jack Carter relates to Ed Sullivan. Just be a boring guest that's on over and over again. <laughs> Fantastic. It's even a good even idea. Even when I was a kid around the time I saw Count Blaze, even then, you know, I was, maybe that's the laws of innocence. Even then I was hip enough to know, not that guy again. Why did they have him on, you know? <laughs> I mean, really, they'd have like the Italian mouse, you know, maybe the singing nun. Okay, oh my God, I've never what? seen her before. You'd have the tumbling axe, maybe the Beatles or the Doors or somebody. 
and our special guest, comedian Jack Carter. I mean, you know, like what, the 99th time in a year? Oh, well, actually, it's because I like he Jack would Carter. do the show. I'm just doing my Don Rickles bits, you know. I think Jack is fine. I like all those old school comics, <clears throat> but I'd like to be... I'd like to be the Johnson to your Boswell, so to speak. I don't know who that is. Johnson, Boswell, I don't know who they are either. <laughs> it's kind of, it's like an IQ test, the Johnson to your Boswell, the Carter to your Sullivan. The I get the Carter and Sullivan reference. Yeah. And well, then there's, I, think, you know. I think Boswell wrote the, uh, no, Boswell is a guy who helped uh, uh, Samuel Johnson write the first English dictionary, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, Johnson wrote the definitive dictionary and Boswell like bothered him all the time just like carter and sullivan Burroughs yeah there's no johnson boswell Chaos. dictionary around right now though What's the i'm big thinking dish- carter mondale johnson kennedy i don't know what the hell he's talking about right now or maybe he's just talking you know thomas and schumann man and wheel are we done now How watson we- and crick i don't know what you know are we name dropping right now i think i think i think you had something to say you wanted your close-up and look we have oh, a close-up you have Is a that close-up it? a yeah. closer close-up yeah well i i i First, got a close up on your hand, so that was kind of yeah. Cool. That was a little oh. too close for comfort. So this is this is probably one of my favorite tunes okay. on the new album, and it happens to be the last tune on the album. There we go. Uh, it's got a live feel, and it includes. Uh, it actually does include some hand clapping. Okay. By yours truly. Oh really? Was that her? Yeah, and one of the guests on Strange Love Live, all the way from the UK. Uh, we we saw Martin Kelly. Age. Hand hand clapping orchestra. Yeah, Martin Kelly. When he did the show, he was actually visiting from England and mm. staying with us for a few days. Groovy. Well, thanks for having me, everyone. Yeah, it's been a great show, everybody. Thanks for listening. Yep. Enjoy the song. Good night. Enjoy. Oh yeah.
Thank you.